Welcome to the presentation on network file systems. In this session, we will explore how network file systems enable distributed file access across networks, allowing multiple computers to share and access files seamlessly. Let's define network file systems, often referred to as NFS. They are distributed file systems that allow access to files across a network. NFS enables transparent file sharing between computers, where files stored on remote servers appear as local files on the client machine. This provides location transparency to users and applications, meaning users don't need to know the actual location of the file to access it. The primary goals of NFS include centralized file storage and management, consistent access to files from multiple clients, reduced data duplication across systems, and simplified backup and recovery processes. Now let's discuss the architecture of network file systems. On the client side, you have the application layer, which represents the applications accessing the files. Below that is the virtual file system or VFS layer, which provides a standard interface for different file systems. Next, there is the NFS client layer, which handles the communication with the NFS server. Finally, the remote procedure call or RPC layer manages the communication protocols. On the server side, you have the RPC layer, the NFS daemon layer, which handles the NFS requests, the virtual file system layer, and the local file system layer where the actual files are stored. The client and server communicate through the network, with RPC calls being used to request and provide file services. Let's explore some of the basic operations in the NFS protocol. The lookup operation is used to find a file by its name. The read operation is used to read data from a file. The write operation is used to write data to a file. The create operation is used to create a new file. The remove operation is used to delete a file. The getAt operation is used to get the file attributes, such as size and permissions. The setAtter operation is used to set the file attributes. Here is an example of how NFS operations work. First, the client requests file attributes using the getAtter function, specifying the file path. The server then responds with the file size, permissions, and timestamps. Next, the client reads file data using the read function specifying the file path, offset, and number of bytes to read. The server then responds with the requested file data. Now let's discuss the different versions of the NFS protocol. NFS version 2 was the original widely deployed version. It features a stateless protocol design, UDP transport only, an 8 kilobyte maximum data size, and limited security based on Unix authentication. NFS version 3 improves performance over version 2. It supports 64-bit file sizes, asynchronous writes, TCP and UDP support, and enhanced error reporting. NFS version 4 features a stateful protocol design, integrated security with Kerberos, TCP only with no UDP support, improved firewall compatibility, client-side caching, and compound operations. The current standard is NFS version 4.2, which includes enhanced features for modern workloads. Now let's explore how to configure an NFS client. To mount an NFS share on a Linux system, you can use the mount command, specifying the NFS server, shared directory, and local mount point. Alternatively, you can add an entry to the file system table, which is located at etc. forward slash stab to automatically mount the share on boot. Key configurations include specifying the server host name or IP address and export path, defining the local mount point, and setting mount options such as read write, read only, soft, or hard. Some common mount options include read write or read only, which defines whether the client has read and write access or read only access to the share. Soft or hard defines the behavior on server failure, determining whether the client retries indefinitely or returns an error. INTR allows operations to be interrupted. Timio equals in sets the timeout value in deciseconds. Retrans equals in sets the number of retransmissions. Resize and size set the read and write buffer sizes, respectively. SEC equals mode sets the security mode 
such as System or Kerberos version 5. Let's explore how to configure an NFS server. To export a file system on a Linux system, you need to edit the exports file, which is located at etc. forward slash exports. Specify the directory to share, allow clients by IP address, host name or network, and access permissions and options. Some key export options include read write or read only, which defines whether clients have read and write access or read only access to the share. Sync or async defines the write operation behavior, determining whether writes are immediately synchronized or can be buffered. Root squash maps the root user to an anonymous user, while no root squash allows root access. All squash maps all users to an anonymous user. Anonuit and Anongit set the anonymous user ID and group ID, respectively. Secure requires ports below 1024 for secure communication. Let's consider the security aspects of NFS. Traditional NFS has security challenges. Authentication relies on client-reported user identification numbers, or UIDs. It has limited encryption, making it vulnerable to network sniffing. IP-based access control can be spoofed, and there are root access risks with no root squash enabled. However, there are security enhancements available. Kerberos integration in NFS version 4 provides strong authentication. Transport encryption with RPSEC underscore JSS secures the data in transit. Using firewall protection limits access to trusted networks. Export restrictions such as read-only shares minimize the attack surface. User mapping and ID squashing help manage user permissions and regular security audits of NFS configuration can identify and address potential vulnerabilities. Implementing Kerberos authentication, RPSEC underscore GSS encryption, and network or firewall controls provides a layered approach to securing NFS deployments. Let's explore some alternatives to NFS and compare them. Some alternative distributed file systems include server message block or common internet file system, or SMB slash CIFS, which is Windows native file sharing. The Andrew file system, or AFS, which features a global namespace. Gluster file system, a scalable network file system. Ceph, a distributed object storage system. And the Hadoop distributed file system, or HDFS. Comparing NFS with SMB slash CIFS, we can see that NFS is Unix or Linux native, while SMB slash CIFS is Windows native. NFS uses UID or GID and Kerberos for authentication, while SMB slash CIFS uses Active Directory. NFS uses client-side caching, while SMB slash CIFS uses both client and server-side caching. NFS generally has higher performance in Unix environments, while SMB slash CIFS has higher performance in Windows environments. NFS is generally simpler to configure, while SMB slash CIFS can be more complex. In summary, NFS provides transparent access to remote files as if they were local, with protocol evolution from stateless NFS version 2 to feature rich NFS version 4 with enhanced security. The client server model involves servers exporting file systems that clients mount and access remotely, and modern implementations address traditional security limitations. Looking ahead, we see NFS adapting to cloud environments with hybrid storage solutions, enhanced implementations for containerized applications, and improved caching and parallel access for high-performance workloads. NFS continues to evolve to meet the demands of modern computing environments. If you like this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Visit codelucky.com for more such useful content.